Hello and welcome to our webinar, Leadership in Times of Crisis. I'm your host, Peggy Daw. Um, Amina was really pleased to be hosting this the conversation today. We're in times of great challenge as we try to figure out new ways of connecting, collaborating, and communicating as, as businesses and as people. Amino has had a longtime partnership with Power and Tell, and we are really honored that Jennifer Sims, the CEO of Power and Tell, has joined us today. On the other hand, we have Erica Schreiner, who is a non-executive director of Amino Technologies and JTC Group. We're going to start our, our conversation today, actually, with some short videos from both Power and Tell and Amino, so you can learn a little bit more about each company. They are longtime business partners. And then we're going to move into the live conversation with these really smart, savvy ladies. So here we go. Power & Tell is proud to announce our Women Business Enterprise National Certification. Here to tell you more is Jennifer Sims, our CEO. Power & Telephone Supply Company is a 50-plus year old distributor that ships to more than 70 countries all across the world. We pride ourselves in our family ownership and our ability to offer end-to-end -end communication solutions. Since 1963, Power and Tell has been a market leader in the procurement, sales, and distribution of communications products. We partner with top manufacturers to cost-effectively deliver the product you need, when and where you need it. Our portfolio of industry-best solutions includes products for data centers, wireless, and FTTX. Our expertise as a true supply chain partner can help you focus on meeting all your customers' needs while satisfying your profit objectives. Thank you for sharing Power & Tell's commitment to diversity. If you'd like more information about our products and services, or if you'd like to know how we can help you meet your diversity goals, visit us online. So let's get started with our questions. Um, the first question is, why is the COVID-19 crisis unlike other crises, such as the financial crisis of 2018? Erica, I'm sure you have some thoughts on this. Well, thanks, Peggy. And, uh, and I think this, is a, this has been on, on a lot of people's mind and then will continue to be for a while, at least until we are on the other side of this crisis. That, that being said, I, I just want to start by saying that in any economic crisis, companies, small or large, uh, should be going through some sort of evaluation of their business and assess how they can get to where they want to be over the next 24 to 36 months. So in terms of, of how the two crises compare, they, they really, uh, there really are similarities between the two like bankruptcy, liquidity shortages, large losses, fiscal stimulus. But there are a lot of major differences. Uh, sadly, the COVID-19 pandemic is causing a high human cost and the economic impact is also very different. Now, if we remember in 2008, the problem started with the financial sector and gradually spread to some other sectors. What's happening in this current crisis, with shelter in place and lockdown and, and other protecting measure, shops and, and, and businesses and services have closed. So the impact to the real economy is much deeper, is faster, and is broader. 
I was looking the other day for, for some, some, some numbers to, to put this into perspective, and I came upon um, what the IMF published a couple of weeks ago. The IMF is projected that the global economy is going to contract by about 3% in 2020. And at first I thought, well, 3%, you know, maybe it's not that bad. But if you compare to the damage that happened to the economy in, during the global financial crisis, that's much worse. So that kind of is putting things into perspective from, from, from that, um, that angle. But we're also seeing some businesses uh, thrive at the moment uh, in the current environment, uh, like uh, the likes of, of Netflix, uh, Nintendo, Clorox, Peloton, basically businesses that are either enabling people to work from home or enabling people to live in their home better. Mm -hmm. What's encouraging to me during this crisis and, and what's different than in 2008 is that we're really seeing businesses embracing social responsibility to a much higher level than we've never seen before. So for example, Microsoft uh, committed to pay its hourly workers their regular pay, even as demand for their services has slowed down. Facebook, Amazon, and IBM, and many others actually committed to the open COVID pledge by making their patents available to, uh, free of charge to, to help end the COVID-19 pandemic. At Amino, we are using our 3D printers to, uh, to make face shields. And we're sending these shields to hospitals and care workers. I think another positive is that we're also seeing the spirit of collaboration between businesses uh, really, really getting stronger during the crisis. Businesses are really coming together and are working better together to, to continue to operate and provide better service to, to customers. And, and I think this is the spirit of collaboration that's brought us, Jennifer and I, together for this webinar. So, so, so Jennifer, let me turn it over to you now. How do you think that the crisis compare? Well, first off, thank you, Peggy and Amino, for having us today. It's such a privilege to be talking with you, Erica, and I hope that you're enjoying your water. I know I'm enjoying my tea. <laughs> Erica has started from a very macro point, so I, I hope along our conversation that, that we'll look at things from different angles and get a, get a holistic perspective as we walk out. So I love the distinction between the crises. The financial crisis hit, it was slow, we could see it coming. But now on a personal note from what I've seen, my suitcase that I use regularly sits in the closet and has that longing look at me, like, when are you gonna use me? Um, because I have been home longer now than I have in any recent past history. And I know that that holds true for many of us, which is a distinct change. And with each change, there's an opportunity. And for now, as we all look out, also a great blessing. As, as we look back on what COVID has brought, I hope that we reflect on a great realization, one where a pause in the world leads us back to the importance of family, health, healing for our environment, as many normally very polluted areas are getting a chance to breathe. And I don't know if you've had the chance to look at some of those awesome pictures of places that have been polluted that are suddenly looking like a whole new area. The difference, the biggest difference, however, with COVID and things prior is that it's touched every country, every person in some form or fashion. And this is the first pandemic in our lifetime, unlike recessions or other events, where really nobody saw it coming till it was here. So just a, one of those random thoughts. Can any one of us think of a time prior to this, where at least in the US and mainland Europe, you were concerned that a grocery store might run out of food and toilet paper. That's now, a really, it's really not good just, point. yeah, do you, it's not just about, do you have enough money, but do you have enough supplies, which will forever impact a part of our psyche and goes to show you the value of a good supply chain and distribution as many of those things that you would count on still today, those Clorox wipes, hand sanitizers, tissues are still not readily available. And as the uncertainty continues 
and knowing that supply is highly integrated, today people are looking at the supply chain just where they are, right? Is there toilet tissue in the grocery store? But as we go forward, we'll likely be surprised by what I call the fourth or fifth layer parts of, that, of those things that we need to make it up. So for example, we may have enough green beans, but we might not have the paint color for that type of wrapper on the can because that's where COVID hit. So we'll be looking further and further, uh, both upstream and downstream, and that's a lot of harder to research to know when and where we should be spending our time trying to understand and hedge accordingly. So I think as we look at it, there are some real positives, which Erica mentioned, the collaboration and being able to see businesses take a very proactive stance on retaining good talent and what do we do that's different. And then there's some things that are challenges that we'll have to look at differently because we've never faced them before. Well, that leads me to the next question. I mean, you set me up perfectly, which is like, so with all that in mind, what leadership qualities do you, Jennifer, think that are needed to help companies navigate through this crisis? Well, I appreciate the, the opportunity for the question. I believe you really get to see good leaders in action as COVID hit. Those with agility and energy, those who, as Erica mentioned, put their employees first. They stepped in with ways of engaging team via video conferencing and making sure that everyone felt connected. Those who clearly revisited, revisited and articulated their vision and who made sure that to the best of their ability, each person on their team had as safe an environment as they could create. That last part is a big deal and unique to this particular crisis. Now, I'm sure that there are others who might say this, but to me, during normal quiet time, there's really not as much management needed, right? We all know our lanes. Our managers can spend a lot of time on doing projects that help move the team forward, but aren't necessarily managing the team as closely every day of every minute of every hour. But during times of change, this is a must, and you really see who steps up. And I'm guessing your minds are, as you're thinking about that, are now thinking about the CEO and exec teams right now. And it's true. And I know for us personally, we meet daily with required cameras and updates to make sure that we're not just aligned, but that we can make those really quick decisions that are much needed throughout the organization so that there's a definitive continued forward movement. And then there's the technology piece, like we've experienced this morning. Everyone connected at home okay, up and running. Thanks, Lee, for PNT. Much better for us because we had done a number of, we had invested substantially in IT upgrades last year, but it's still new, working from home. I loved hearing your dog, Maggie. I think it's awesome. You get to hear a little bit about you and that, and that you've got a dog. And how cool is that? Hopefully you'll give him, him or her a pet pet at the end. But it's all still new. And, and some of us have always said that um, may all, some of the business leaders have now said many people more will work from home. That means where we congregate may no longer be in the same place. Now, wireless and mobile enable that, and that's where Amino and PNT jump in. But there's also the disruption of having to build new places and abandon or repurpose things that were once ideal. You still have to have a new agreement on temporary work from home rules of engagement, right? Just sending somebody home and saying go doesn't make sure that they're connected, that their work environment is good, that they feel a sense of connection, that they're leading that sense of connection and not just being reactive in it. And so we sh at this point, we should consider every manager, not just the C-suite, because many of them have had to pivot from in-person management to remote. And I can say firsthand and through our managers, that is a whole different experience. So our managers, at least at PNT, are having to talk daily with each of their team members. This increases their workload on just that one aspect alone is impressive considering that they're managing their own workload as well. So they're shifting from independent contribution plus management to now 100% management collaboration and ensuring those close collaboration, clear, honest, and even more compassionate communication because we don't know about each other's home life well enough 
to interact and make sure that we're connected 100%. So I hope that as we transition to a new normal, we can sustain the levels of engagement across each one of our companies and look for ways to keep it up. Now, I've shared some about our thoughts. So Erica, what are your thoughts on leadership qualities to help companies navigate through crisis? Well, Jennifer, I certainly appreciate hearing more about what you and your company is doing and in the way we're doing a lot of similar things. And, and, and I think that because both our companies are financially stable, I think we can do a lot more. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and we have that ability to kind of breathe from, from that perspective. But let me maybe start by answering kind of the, the, the basic question of leadership and, and what, what is a great leader. So if, from my perspective, a, a great leader they said the vision that people can believe in, they can follow, they said the strategy, and then they are super focused on, on execution. But great leader during the time of crisis, they have three things that I think are super important. They have empathy, they are brutally honest, and they create credible hope. And I think the last one here is the most important. So what, what we did at, at Amino, when, when we saw the crisis, and, and I think we saw it a bit earlier than, than many other Western companies, because we have a large team in Hong Kong. At the board level, we switched out our conversation, and it was very much about the well-being of our employees and business continuity. And, and Donald McGrava, our, our CEO, was very, very clear. It goes back to you know, having a mission. It was very clear that the business needed to take care of the amino people. And he not only said it, he, he put this into place and, and, and went into action. Uh, and, and whether it was calls with employees or, or video calls with employees. And, and there was also a lot of other things that we, we, did, uh, we did music videos just for fun to engage em employees very differently. Fruits baskets were, were sent to, uh, to people's home. And, and what, so while we were financially stable and, and it created stability, what, what Donald did, what his leadership did, is really to, to take the people along and allow them to have less anxiety and to continue to focus on the business during the crisis. And what the Amino people did in turn, is that they really continued to help the business to operate as close as possible to normal. That those are really great comments, um, both Jennifer and Erica. I mean, it's it is. These are difficult times. We've all learned a lot about each other in the in these periods of time. Um, so, Jennifer, what do you what business acumen do you think is needed to move forward? I mean, normal. Th th there's a new normal coming, and we don't really know what that looks like. So, what's it what's it going to take for us to get there? Well, now we've all seen what a pandemic can do. And I don't know about you, but we're unable to unsee it, right? Once you see it, you can't go back to what was. So normal will probably not be the new normal we knew just a few months ago. And I'm guessing, I could be wrong, but at least I, for one, will never walk into a grocery store the same way. Not that I've walked into a grocery store in the last number of months. Frankly, I haven't. They have that nice curbside drop-off pickup um, that we take advantage of. But I can't imagine we'll walk in with the same perception that we did a few months ago. So we really have a choice. Do we try and hide and force it back as it was, or do we face it eyes wide open with what things around us can be? And we get the chance to look at our environment and try to modify it to one that best suits our employees, our customers, our suppliers, and our partners. And each impacted party we'll need that continued reassurance that Erica so nicely mentioned that, that will look a little different as well. Those connection points are via video, they're not in person. You can't read body language 100%, right? To, to know how that works, so you have to spend more time and be more mindful and conscientious of how that looks. Um, and then each impacted party will need that continued reassurance. Then as a corporation and as individuals, we'll figure out who can be counted on? What are our skill sets different out of the office than in the office or in the office for those that are there? And that we greatly appreciate being frontline. I know that we both have warehouses and people who are engaged and trying to keep things up and moving. 
Now, I think, um, so, we'll, so we plan to come out of this, not at the same normal, but as a new normal. Okay. Closer okay. as an executive team, closer as managers, closer as employees, as business partners, because our choices to step up our communication, our technology, and, and using the contingency plans that we've all had in place for many years, but using them to good end, and having that laser focus on executing our mission, right material, right place, right time, every time for us. And Erica, I would love to hear your thoughts on what you've seen. I love the clarity of mission. I think it's important to keep that mission ahead of us and, and each company has a mission. And I think also, you know, what we think about what we'll do on the other side of the crisis, I think a lot of matters is what we do now and over the next months. We don't know how long this crisis will last. We don't know where we're gonna get out of the pandemic. And, and while I talked about what we're doing with our employees, you know, when we when we started to think about how do we operate during the crisis, we went beyond just about how do we operate as a business. We thought about how do we help our customers and our partners operate and continue to operate and and hopefully thrive uh, as much as, as as they can during the crisis. So as we kind of shifted our way of thinking from um, our, just our own business, but much more broadly, we decided to, as an example, we decided to. Um, to provide our Amino SM engaged support and services for free. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's a software that enable our, 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 service, our devices to be installed, configured, and troubleshooted remotely, which means that you don't need a truck roll. You don't need a, a technician to come to people's home to set that up. So you can see the importance of, of doing that because Right now, with lockdown and shown in place, no, no one can, can go into other people's homes. So having that service and having it for free is really lowering the barrier to, to, to you know, a, a, or any challenge to continue to operate. And, uh, and we've, seen, we've seen a lot of positive response with our partners and customer uh, with, with this offering. So as we, as we think about the future for us, and, and we just had a, a board and a strategy uh, meeting earlier today, we're really thinking about how do we continue to innovate? How do we continue to grow as a business? How do we partner and how do we, we work with our customer differently so that we increase their customer satisfaction? Do we change the experience working with our partners? And, and that's allowing us to kind of think beyond the crisis, but to also put the right stepping stone in place to get through this crisis. This is such good, tangible advice. Um, is, there one, is there one final comment each of you would like to make? Let's start with Jennifer that you think is just important for everybody to understand as we talk today. You'll have to forgive that it's, it's a two-parter. Um, yeah, sorry. Hopefully, <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is a once-in-a-lifetime experience with COVID. And we all have to, a choice to make. Do we come out of it worse, the same, or stronger? And I know that... Uh, both myself, my team, our board are going to do our best to make sure PNT and those around us, like Amino, come out stronger by doing the things and taking the things we can learn and do better and getting them ingrained in our business. Where there are unique challenges, such as the grocery store and no supply, that's where, frankly, we shine as a distributor, as you mentioned, of communication equipment enabling connectivity where people work, learn, recover, and play. And you can easily see the value of the supply chain when it works well and why having a diverse base is important. I also walk out reaffirmed on being financially stable, Erica, which you mentioned, and working with others who are. We happen to be two companies who are. That's not everyone. And we should be looking to work with those who have a vision, stick with it, make some sense, and are trying to make the world a better place because we're all in it. And I'm sure as we all have a renewed focus on our customers, internal and external, and think about Amino and their focus to mitigate the new normal that Erica mentioned with products that allow self-install and those services like Engage. It's such a privilege to work alongside those who are working hard with each of you in mind to make a difference in the world and make it better. I've heard that it shared that COVID didn't change history, it just sped it up by 10 years. 
So let's make the most of continuing forward even better than where we started, which is what Erica and I are here to do. So Erica, you? Well, you put it so well. I, I, and I continue to, to think that we will learn from this crisis. It, it is obviously one of the toughest things that we've lived as a generation. And the companies that will, will come out of the crisis in, in better shape are those companies that have taken care of the people during the crisis that would have adjusted the strategy for uh, being able to take advantage of all the post-COVID the post environment and opportunities. And we would have invested in technology, in, in innovation, and would have rethought how to work with their customers, partners, uh, and employees. The world will, will certainly change. I think that people will think differently about many things. Uh, and as long as we have that agility as a company, and as long as we take care of our employees and think about what we can do beyond just the, the, the confines of the company will we'll come ahead. What do would each of you do, or what do each of you do to stay focused during this during this time of challenge? Erica, you want to lead off? Yeah, well, I was going to say, Erica, why don't you go first? I'd be happy to. I, I think that um, for me, I take great great uh, great comfort um, being with my family, uh, and, and obviously during during the last few months, we've been a lot more together. And, and that's been actually a, a wonderful experience. So we've been, uh, before living in London, there are so many things to do. We were always busy going from A to B. And, and in a way, and we hear that a lot and it's a bit cliche, but it's, it's true for us, things have slowed down and we've taken a lot more time together. And it's been, it's been really uh, a very positive experience. I also, and you know, in London, we've been allowed to exercise once a day and, and now we can exercise as much as we want. Um, so I run, uh, I run and it's for me, it's, it's a great way to clear my head and, and to come back, energize and, and refocus. And these are really the two things that are getting me through the crisis. Uh, and maybe potentially one thing that it's, it is worth mentioning as a third thing, because you know, things comes in three, I think. Um, uh, it, it's to see around me what people have been doing way beyond their day to day to help each other whether it's business to business, whether it's people to people, uh, people volunteering uh, and having the level of solidarity, even when, when things are, are hard for them, um, I, I would never imagine that would be, uh, be, be the case uh, during the crisis. So I, I kind of have a renewed um, uh, a trust in, in society, if you will. One question that just came in is, well, do you think people will start working more remotely, like more people working from home, not in the office as much? I, I, many companies, uh, Facebook and so forth, have, have gone public and said it's a what I call a temporary new normal. Until there are solutions in order to keep people safe, let's make sure that we, uh, we allow whatever facility works best for the employee. However, they all caveat it, and I would as well. It's dependent on the productivity. Some jobs lean themselves to being product productive and can lean themselves to being productive at home. I would say that with a little bit of a caveat. I think that there will be lots of people who are now going to work from home. But study after study, person after person, there are certain jobs where that works, but the bulk of them don't. The bulk of us need human interaction. The bulk of us do really well when we have that waterside cooler talk time and lunches together and ability to be face to face. So I think that there'll, there'll probably be a lot more people who work remotely and it'll probably, as we slowly went out when the COVID hit, it'll probably slowly go back in is the most likely. And the key for it all, isn't where you work, it's that you're productive. Are you making a difference for yourself, your family, your company, your customers, and those folks you work around with? Because when, if and when you do, then it doesn't matter where you work. So that's the key. Let me add that to is the, great. Go ahead, Erica. If I may, if I may Peggy, I, I think that the, um, you know, the working from home has been a bit of a train 
trend right over the last five, maybe even 10 years. Um, and, and, but this has been a kind of a slow trend. And, and now that we've been kind of in this kind of global experiment where it, most people that could work from home, it's hard for a company to say, well, it doesn't work because we've proven it. And then, you know, in most cases it does work, right? I think the question will be twofold. Will be, first of all, not everyone, even if they can, want to work from home. Uh, and there was some Gallup poll I saw yesterday, um, I, just for the US, where you know, only ha less than half of the people who could work from home really wanted to work from home. So that's kind of that social interaction element that's quite not there when you're working virtually. Uh, but, but also, also, if you can figure out a way to have kind of a mixed workforce, right, where they can interact together and work in teams together with some part of the team being working remotely and the other part working from home, you know, I think that's the real winner because you will allow people to do what they want to do, whether it's working from home or not working from home. Um, and, and then we all know that when people are really happy doing what they do, productivity goes up. Well, I think that's a great note for us to end on. I think we could go on for at least another half hour or so. <laughs> However, I think we have come to the end of our time. So I really want to thank both of you for such really great, wonderful comments and advice and whatnot for moving forward. And um, I just want to remind everybody we have recorded this. We will make a recording available to everybody. Um, but honestly, everybody have a great day and just stay safe. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, Panzi. Thank you, Erica. It's such a pleasure. Yes, indeed. Bye. Bye. Bye.